You're listening to episode 84 of Power Pearls Podcast. Intuitive, purpose-driven yarn crafting to empower your knits and pearls. If you are loving this podcast and you want to help it to be sustainable for the long haul, then you can actually become a patron of Power Pearls Podcast. With your help, influence, and support, we can take this exciting ride together. To learn more how to become a patron and support the show, visit patreon.com forward slash Caragot Warner. Hey there, fiber-loving biz makers. If you're ready to create a holistically balanced life and business that converges creativity with mindful living and you are not afraid of making money, working hard, and you have the drive to succeed, then I invite you to sign up for my free 15-minute business coaching discovery session to see if working together is a good fit. So if you want to learn more, visit karagotwarner.com forward slash work with Kara to learn about my coaching programs and to sign up for your free discovery session today. Hey, girlfriend, how are you? Good. How are you? So it's good to see you again, Tabitha. And, Thanks um, for having me back. Yeah, this is great. So we're doing this awesome series on productivity, uh, how to start a creative business, or just in general, how to um, work on your yourself. So self-improvement. That's right. So it's really like a little, I guess this this um, season, it's almost like a little workshop. When you say it's almost like we're kind of, um, you know, each episode is kind of I think so, because we've had some real good golden nuggets that you can utilize right away. It's like yeah. a great, great specific plan of action. Exactly. So if you just, you're jumping into this and you haven't listened to the previous episodes, definitely start with episode number one in this season, because we talk about mindset and we really spent time trying to think about what episode should we, you know, start with? Like, what should be the first thing? And mindset is like a no brainer, right? Because you need to kind of get you know, ready to, you know, just to start whatever, you know, whatever project you're, you're going to start, whether it's for business, for life, you know, so yeah. So today, what are we talking about? So I'm looking at my notes here. We're talking about planning, baby. Planning. Planning. Yeah. We're talking about the time. Yeah. So planning systems that we use, like tools that we love, um, different, you know, like time management Mm -hmm. and planning. And those could be like a digital, our digital um, tools and also Mm -hmm. our physical tools. So I don't know if you said you had to go get your planner. Do you have your your paper planner? I have all my stuff now. Yeah. And I've got my stuff too. So we can show it on screen. That's right. (laughs) um, Because you guys are, that are patrons and I haven't sent this a a whole bunch, but so if you're a patron of Power Pro, I can't see that. If you're a Patreon, if you're a, a patron, God, <laughs> if you're a patron of Power Pearls podcast, you get to see the video version of this podcast. You can check that all out uh, by going to caragotwarner.com. No, I should use, I shouldn't use that one. I should use the pretty link. I'm going to edit this out. Don't <laughs> um, you can go to powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash community to learn. So anyway, um, let's dive in. We're going to start with your uh, systems, Tabitha, like you'll share your tools and your, that your, your digital tools, and then we'll go into your paper tools. So why don't you go for it? Do it, do it, do it. Digital, digital, right off the bat. I use Evernote for every note, brainstorm, um, task list, pretty much. Um, patterns that are kind of in progress. I use that for just about everything. We use Google Drive within my company uh, so that we could share spreadsheets and share files. That's really, really important um, because everybody can edit and change and all that stuff all Mm -hmm. at the same time. And you don't have to worry about updating and resaving and all of that. Um, We use Slack for our in-office communications, which has been fantastic. It keeps me really connected with the team because I work offsite. They're all in Vancouver and I'm in Tennessee. uh, So it's quite a three hour time difference. Um, oh my gosh. So it, Slack enables us to do video calls with each other if we need to for quick things. Um, I can talk to my whole team and let them know things very, very quickly because uh, email can 
be a bit of a drag sometimes to slog through and find <laughs> find what's important. Uh, so that's where mm-hmm. we hit each other with our questions and, and one-off things that we need help with at the moment. Um, and we are, our business uses uh, Red Booth, uh, which is a project management it's not an app. It's not software. It's some online thing. I guess. What do they call that? A cloud? Well, I don't know. Yeah. Like, and I want you to just punt it back up a little bit for people that might not know at all. Like what? Mm-hmm. So, because, you know, of course I know I use these tools too. So what is Slack? Slack is a, like an instant messaging service, but it connects with all of the apps that you use in daily life, like Evernote and Google. And so it connects with everything. So it really integrates things. So I can very quickly send a message, an instant message to my boss and send her the document that's over here in Google and it all be within Slack. So she doesn't have to go anywhere else to be able to track it down or log in somewhere else or um, open up a file folder. It's all, it's all, inter intercommunication instant messaging. And so how is Slack different than let's say Evernote? Because like I know a lot of people know Google Google Docs. So how is so so Evernote and Google Docs are uh-huh. pretty similar. It's not like Slack. You, you can do some messaging. You can do some instant. Um, yeah, but it's clunky. So like messaging, you kind of have to go to a different tab and it's a work chat and then you click the links in there and it doesn't show up in your Evernote and you can't edit at the same time. Um, so that's, that's where Evernote's not as refined. To me, Evernote is personal. Like I will write a note and I can share it and, mm-hmm. and and through Slack, I can send the link to it, but they're not going to be able to edit it or engage with it on the same level that I can. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's important to have those multiple tools because mm-hmm. Slack, you can bring in a note from Evernote as a link. Right. You can bring in a Google Doc. You can bring in something from Dropbox. Mm-hmm. So they all have their place. And so right. I look at Evernote like it's a word processing um, but a way to organize all of your notes right. and folders all in one place. So it's like right. having, uh, it's like using Word, but you no, know, it's it's well, somewhat me, similar. You know, uh, it's for me, it's less word processing and more file cabinet. I am mm-hmm. a paper free file household. Um, and so everything is digital in Evernote from my taxes mm-hmm. to my contracts to, well, not my taxes, but um, the information I need for my taxes is in there. Household information, kids vaccine records, like it's, it's my file mm-hmm. cabinet. Yeah, I guess that's probably the best way to, to look at it. And I use Evernote in that way, similar mm-hmm. in a similar way. And it's just indispensable. And I pay yeah. for it. I mean, oh, I all these too. apps are free, <laughs> but I pay for Evernote yep. because you know what? Yep. Yeah. And it's, it's the other thing that's really amazing and really ma- what makes these even more powerful is that all of these apps you can use from your phone. So right. Oh, yes. I'm in Anywhere the car. I go. Anywhere I'm I go. walking, you mm-hmm. know whatever I'm doing. And I'm like, oh, or I'm downstairs cooking dinner and yeah. the computer's off. I'm like, I got to get it in. I put it in Evernote or well, in like, Asana. I love oh, Evernote has a fantastic camera option where it'll scan, so, take a picture and it looks just like a scan. So I'll yeah. be walking in the airport with my lunch receipt, getting ready on the plane, take a picture, boom, save it mm-hmm. automatically in my f- receipt folder for the year, throw it away. And on the plane, I'll tag it with what it is and how, you know, and who it's for and what your taxes, boom. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'll mm-hmm. be able to quickly find it anytime I need to later. Mm-hmm. Do you use, um, this is, I guess it still falls under this tool planning systems thing, but um I use PayPal and QuickBooks online for my mm-hmm. business. So I have a PayPal bank, uh, a PayPal yes. business account. So I don't save my receipts. I don't know if that's naughty or not, but they're all documented in PayPal. So I don't see Well, save technically you're supposed to be saving your receipts because Uh-oh. if the IRS ever comes in. I know, but I used to be know, a bookkeeper and so I should know yeah, better. But I thought, should. well, it's all documented because it's all in It PayPal. isn't because it's not. Well, PayPal, yes, those count. You can access those are like receipts, but like you're. Yeah. Your bank records are not. Oh no, my bank, my bank. I know a lot of people use this no. as well. Yeah. So, but like, so I like a yeah. transaction. Like, if I, I go buy them. coffee at Starbucks mm-hmm. while you're for your while breakfast. I'm traveling. Mm-hmm. Well, I shouldn't say because when I'm traveling, it's only it's a very isolated period uh, where let's say I go to TNA or I've mm-hmm. you know been to a podcast show or whatever. I will keep all my receipts and right. and yes, they're already automatically they go right into QuickBooks. I don't have to touch my bookkeeping because it's all, it's all automatic, but I will just take the clump of receipts and put them, drop them into an envelope. 
I don't. I just scan them all as soon as I get the receipt so I can immediately throw it away. I, I literally that's really I like that. I, so I, I, I take a picture. Great. Yeah. I scan it and then like where whenever I get ready to sit down, then I will tag it, title it and make sure it's in the right folder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been really bad. See, I have this receipt right here mm -hmm. from Walmart. Yeah, just take I, a picture. I bought right office, <laughs> office supplies for B-School because I'm, oh, I'm yeah. a B-Schooler. I'm a B-Schooler. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, yay. You're amazing. So, but normally I'd forget. I know that's really bad. Like I got into a bad habit. Like yeah. I should be smacked, but like, cause I thought, well, I don't know. I use my, my PayPal card. Everything's documented in PayPal. So I don't need this. I guess I do. Oh, it does. Especially if it's like, if you have to prove that it's like a work kind of expense, the receipts, but the receipts in PayPal. So as long as it's in PayPal, then you don't have to worry about it. You're good to go. But I don't use a PayPal card. I just, mm, I don't have a business okay. account or anything. I think I would say that if there's a paper trail or a digital trail, mm -hmm. you're covered. If the, yeah. you know, because the IRS accepts digital receipts. You don't have to save your paper receipts. Mm -hmm. So mine just happened to be in Evernote because that's the only place I can save them. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, I could put them in Dropbox or something, but I can tag things in mm -hmm. Evernote. So I could say this was a receipt for this, this year. Boom. Good. Okay. So what else? So you've got your paper. Well, okay. So, so that's ideal weeks. Let's see. You have batch scheduling. What is that? Batch what? scheduling, we talked about in our last episode. I told you everything about that. But I have my ideal week scheduled out. And it looks like this. I'll show you. This is my ideal week. Do I follow it all the yeah. time? And no. <laughs> but, that's, but that's the same thing. You don't re recreate your ideal week. That's just because nope. I have this, something like that too. This is Monday. Yeah. I have my theme days up at the top. It shows me when my main work blocks are. It's all color. -coded. So like I'll have like the light blue right off the bat is my personal me self time. Uh, then I call the oranges are all of my work blocks. Um, the Light green is children-related activities. Yellow stuff, there's a lot of yellow on there. Yellow is all the have-to stuff. I have to take a shower. Apparently, I have to eat and feed people. Oh. Apparently, I have to sleep. <laughs> I, I have to get exercise in or mm -hmm. so I don't die in my 30s. Yeah. Um, so that's what that kind of stuff is. And then the pink is household chore blocks because I batch my chores. I tend to, you know, I do bathrooms all at one time. I do mm -hmm. floors all at one time. I dust the whole house at one time. So batch my, <laughs> batch my household chores. Well, la -di -da. Um, I don't do any of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this is my ideal week. So it's already kind of laid out every day. I kind of know what my schedule should follow. Um, and then like up here, I have like what my themes are. So, you know, Friday is catch up day and Monday is admin plus pattern day. Tuesday is writing plus pattern day. Um, Wednesday is when I try to schedule my meetings um, with my boss or anything like that. Thursday is graphics and more photo day. Um, All right. This is, this is cool. Yeah. You, you're getting this freebie, <laughs> you guys. So if you go to powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash ideal day, you can yes. get it. That's right. I will, I will share yeah. my schedule with you. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So um, now you also mention in our notes here, scheduling, and then your parentheses, uh, yeah. Lisa Jacob, Jacobs. Yes. She's the one that turned me on to this ideal week concept. Yeah. Um, and so. Michael Hyatt, same thing. Yeah. Michael Hyatt has a, a, a he does an ideal role. day, I think. No, or he's maybe. got a week. He's one of them had an yeah. ideal day and one of them had an ideal week. And so I, I love That's great. Um, so Lisa Jacobs, she has this book. She has a couple books. There's the marketing playbook, which is really good. And then she has, mm. I think it's called, I think it's called your best year, 2018. Um, and in it, she talks about, you know, scheduling and batching and mm -hmm. looking ahead. And so looking ahead is one of my other things. So back here on the wall behind me Ooh. is this desk calendar that I took all the months I'm gonna, I can't do this backwards. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm not Vanna White. I can't, <laughs> I can't do that. But so I took all the months and I put them up on the calendar. I had that I, up. I had mine up on this wall on the, I think the last time I we guess, spoke. I guess you could say this is like my chalkboard 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Just because I have room in these columns right here where I can write down my focus for the month, but mm -hmm. then I have the month all right in here. Um, but it gives me my long-term view. I will put on my travel days, important holidays, um, uh, big project launch days. Uh, and so once I know like a project launch day, I can work backwards on when my marketing should start, which should be at least 30 days before your launch so that mm -hmm. you can start letting people know about it. But seeing it up there lets me work backwards and be able to really I love it. In on something. So I have that that I look at. I have my ideal week. I still, despite using Evernote, I still have uh, my regular old notebook, you know, it's grid line, and this is just every day. Again, there's another year view, <laughs> and that you know where I brainstorm. Um, and some of this will go into Evernote. Some of this will go into my calendar. This just is. This goes with me every, everywhere. Everywhere. So is that that's Moleskine. Is that a Moleskine? This no? I don't know. I found it for like five bucks at Hobby Lobby. It's like a lecit. Le how do you pronounce it? Lecturn. Lecturn book. Um, here's one of my favorite things. So here in the back, I have this thing that I've been doing. It's called hmm. here in pixels. And so every day at the end of the day, I kind of just touch in on what has been my mood for the day. And so at the end of the year, it'd be all full of color. And, on I'm going to take a screenshot of you doing that. <laughs> That's, That's right. going to be, gonna be in the I show. I can pull off the Vanna White. Um, and then of course, everything that needs to be put on the calendar goes into when I work on a project, that project is broken down into what I, I learned this. I cannot remember the lady's name, so forgive me, but it's Julie something. She is the author of this 100-day list, the 100-day oh, or something that. like that. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. where you take a project and you brainstorm all of the baby steps, things that take no more than 30 minutes to get done. Mm -hmm. So like if, you're, uh, if your goal is to write a book and then that one of the – breakdown is to take photos. Well, now you still need to break it down. What photo, What specific photos do you have to take pictures of? So you break it down into literally 15, 30 minute baby steps. Mm -hmm. And then those baby steps are what you build your schedule off of. So I use a paper planner. Um, right now I'm using Erin Condren, easy peasy. Mm -hmm. um, and I, the first call, I keep track of all of my appointments and deadlines up here and then my to-do list just goes down in the rest of it um and and i i sit down every sunday you, usually it's actually friday evenings i sit down and i look at the next week ahead i see what my ideal theme days are and i pencil those to-do list items on those theme days um, fantastic in the to-do list and you know i have i have a list of things i have to do every day uh, i don't list those out unless I get sometimes I'll get into these like little periods where I won't do them <laughs> so okay. then I'm like okay Tabitha you need to make it an actual to-do list item and so I'll put it back on the to-do list so I can actually physically cross it off because crossing things off really helps my ego <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so I will sometimes write something down that I already did just so oh, I can cross it off I'm terrible at that I'm terrible <laughs> had coffee check <laughs> that uh, is so funny I do so, I've, done I've done it I'm guilty yep. I'm guilty guilty I as also like um so I have the month ahead, the month view. I'll show you real quick. Um, I don't fill out much in my month view until I get close to that month. Things that need to go on the month view are usually put on a post-it note until I'm ready to sit down and fill out the month ahead. Um, so Use a pencil. I, I don't like erasing. No, I like it to be pretty. <laughs> See, I'm like, no, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And the fancy pen. I have fancy pens. Yep. I have beautiful. I have my dream pens, which high tech mica for, or point four is the dream pen, baby. It's thin. It's mm. smooth. Comes in pretty colors. But anyway, so my month view in my calendar is pre says pretty much the same thing up here. It's, it's big things, launch dates, impor um, important uh, appointments, doctor's appointments, kids' activities. I need to know when choir practices and karate practices, mm -hmm. uh, trips and travel, birthdays, they all go in the month view. And then all of that is broken down again. So every Friday evening or sometime over the weekend is my weekly review. How did the week go? Did I miss anything? What do I need to move? Is this really important enough that I actually had to do it? 
and so that's why I didn't do it. <laughs> uh, do I need to delegate? So I, I will evaluate how the week went and then figure out how I need to adjust for the week ahead. And then usually about the last two weeks of the month is when I will review what I need to do for the next mm -hmm. month. I'll, I'll work on that calendar. I think you covered it. I don't have anything else to say. No, <laughs> I'm a pro, baby. Yeah. I should be a professional planner system yes, developer. Should. And I told you you should do that. You should, yeah. <laughs> but sometimes, like uh, a friend of mine, um, he is such an awesome friend, and I adore him. But he uh, gets very overwhelmed with some of my ideas, and he's like, "I mm. just, I don't know how you do that." And it, I, I, I guess it's just some certain. Mm -hmm. uh, mental types. I kind of in type A and he's definitely not a yeah. type of personality. <laughs> well, you don't overwhelm me. And, and in fact, you inspire me. And I think that we have a lot of similarities in this area too. Yeah. So I guess I can just chime in with a few of, with a sure, few of you my... you follow up with your sure. little things. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I know. So insignificant. So I live and Never. die by Evernote for sure. Like, yes. And I use that like you do, like a filing cabinet, although I... Um, yeah, I don't do the receipt thing like you do, but I do like catch, like if I have ideas, like because I'm always feeling like inspired. I'm like, oh, record it or type it, and uh, you know when it when it comes, so I can put it into something I call the little um, brain dump. Mm -hmm. You know, that's um, a place to just to collect everything. Yeah. And there's something that I that I actually do with Evernote. Um, and I take a lot of trips in my car, long trips. I go to Indianapolis, which is about two hours from where I live. So I go like every couple of weeks, and so I literally have written. Recorded. Because yeah, you can business record. plan. Yes. Right, so I, I have, because um, I get a lot of ideas when I'm driving, and we all do. Yeah. So what I've done is I use the little little microphone because you can record uh, in um, Evernote and I'll record myself talking about whatever, uh, you know, could. Brilliant idea you have. Idea that I need. <laughs> so one time going to Indianapolis, I literally wrote my, my three month business plan, um, for the coming months. Um, this time, which is still, this is like, it's still in, in, in effect. Like, I mean, I had light bulb moments. I just recorded them. Then later I transcribed my notes. But another thing that I do is I actually use the little, like, you know, I'll tag, I'll use the text function, right? The text, mm -hmm. but then I'll use my little tiny microphone you know, on the keyboard, yep. on the Apple or Android yeah. you know, microphone to record. So it, it sometimes it doesn't sound, yeah. when doesn't you're catch the right like, words. When you're Southern like me, it, it doesn't it like doesn't. to play so nice. Mm -hmm. So I like <laughs> I it a lot in text messaging, but I still have to fix yeah. it. When sure. it <laughs> but I like fun? to talk. So I'm a talker. So I yeah. record myself. And I have made listen use of that. And, that's awesome. I should try that. Yeah. So I do that a lot and it's extremely effective for me. So yeah. that's how I use Evernote a lot. And then I use Asana. So the th big three for me, Asana, I'm sorry, you know, Evernote, Asana, and Google, Google yeah. Docs, Google Drive. Google Actually, Drive. Actually, not yeah. Google Drive. Wait, back up. It's Evernote, Asana, and Google Calendar. Google Calendar. Okay. Because yes. like I do use Google Drive and I do mm -hmm. use Dropbox, but those are more like um, productivity like related. So Evernote, Asana, and Google Calendar run my business because mm -hmm. my Google Calendar is connects to my iPhone and everything else in my life. Mm -hmm. And so if I have something coming up, it's going to ding me and I, I will not forget because right. I'm really good at forgetting. So Google Calendar helps me stay connected to all of my appointments. Asana is my project management. It's, it's kind of like... Um, uh, Trello. Um, I guess I should explain yeah. Asana. So Asana is, uh, it's more like for creating checklists yeah, uh, in project management so that let's say I'm doing, we're doing these, we're doing this season of power pearls. I'll have a project dedicated mm -hmm. to season one, the topics. So everything is like list form, drop and drag, you can date things, mm -hmm. you check them off when they're done. So Trello is also another um, Those program project desert. management programs like Asana or Red Booth or Basecamp or Trello or OmniFocus or mm -hmm. even the cozy one, I think, cozy family calendar has the thing. That's where you can put, break down your, your, like that hundred day list that I told you about mm -hmm. your hundred day tasks, you know? Oh, I use it steps. for, yeah, you break it down. Everything, personal. So it doesn't have to just mm -hmm. be for business. I yeah. have, 
I even have a food shopping list in a sauna because nice. I have a little, and you, you, like, instead of checking it off, you swipe it with your finger. Yeah. I'm like, ah, it just feels good. They knew that when they were making the present, right? Because everyone wants to swipe. Um, so I have that for um, even like um like a music playlist or, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's endless. It's all, yeah. I think the reason why I love all these programs is because it's like a blank slate. You can, you can create them. You can use them in any way that you want. There's so much flexibility. It's yep. absolutely crazy. Yep. Um, so then I use it. So with these three tools, I also have my, my, my paper planner and I have Michael Hyatt's, um, full focus planner. Mm-hmm. So I've used this in, a, in, um, I've mentioned this in other, <laughs> episodes. So basically the way that this whole thing is, is, uh, worked out or laid out. So you start with your annual goals. Now this is only one quarter, by the way, this is one quarter. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So one quarter planning because there's one page for a day. This is one day right here. Wow. This is one day. Okay. And, um, and so the way it's laid out is, so you have your annual goals. So you start there and then your achievement goal templates, you have habit goal templates, rolling quarters. Um, and basically it's like, uh, here, this is blank, but I can kind of go to my, well, it's in pencil. You're going to hate me, but I just have, you know, the, the things that happen, which yeah. is, this is blank. Um, <laughs> So, well, because anyway, I have so many different places that I put things yeah. and I thought, you know, maybe that's not the right place. Um, in this book, I'm not necessarily using the rolling quarters. Then they have your ideal week, which I do have. Um, my ideal week is in here, but I like yours better because we can, because yours is a digital, yours is digital. So we can probably get yours, but here's my ideal week right here. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, so. and I even, you can't see it unless I send you the Excel document, but mm-hmm. I broke my schedule up so that I have a pie chart <laughs> that tells it that where I can visually see how balanced or unbalanced I am. So like, look, oh my at God, my schedule. <laughs> like I, just, I just opened it up so I could see how to PDF it from Excel, but like mm-hmm. I can look at my, my chart right now and the little, little pie chart. In fact, here, I think I can show you on my computer. There's my pie chart. See that? Oh my goodness. So I can look at that You're and crazy. see that my have tos like sleep, <laughs> eating, feeding the children, showering, take up about four. Oh gosh. You tracked schedule. that? <laughs> I did. Yeah. Oh, like, um, where, household is like 6%. Work is about 22% of my, you know, work week. Uh, wow. Because so I, I just wanted to see like, yeah. how, how am I devoting enough time to the areas that I need to dev- devote on a realistic level, on an ideal level? Like I said, this is an ideal week. There are some weeks yeah. where my children are homesick and they ruin it completely. Mm. I hear you. And so I'm just going to further along. So here's my um, habit goals and achievement goals. This is uh, habit goals. Yeah. So like here's meditate daily because I've been, you know, I was really like slacking in that. And yeah. I like how, again, the little check off method. Yeah, I like that. Um, and so you can, you can create little habit goals and that's for the quarter. And then the, um, there's a, let's see, the ideal week, work day. Uh, so morning, morning ritual. I have my morning ritual work day cool. shut down. Yeah. There's I have that. that in my blue notebook. <laughs> and then what happens is then he goes into, um, so then you start your weekly big three and then every day um, or your daily, you have your weekly big three. So you start the week with your, I'll sh- um, I'd have to show you another page um, for what that looks like. You have start with your weekly big three and then every day you have your, your big three for your day and mm-hmm. then you plan out your day. And then, so I'll keep doing this. It's a bad habit. Um, so after Friday, he has a weekend optimizer. Oh, isn't that cool? Yeah. That's awesome. And then you have days for Saturday and Sunday. Cause you know what? It's good to, even though with those are laid back, like I have, this is a particular Saturday in January where I was like, um, Dharma deep dive, <laughs> like, you know, Dharma meditation, whatever. Yeah. Knitting, knitting. <laughs> <laughs> family game night. Um, and then, <laughs> and then weekly review. This is a good one. Like, 
your wins. What because you know, Tabitha, we were in a in a very previous episode of Power Pearls, we would talk about our accountability. We, you know, we've we haven't done that. We should get back to yeah, doing that. Do but he that. has that literally your own accountability partner in this book. <laughs> weekly, nice. your weekly wins, your action, like what you know, what you what could you improve on? Yep. And then you do your weekly three. That's that's what I was talking about. <laughs> weekly three, then Monday starts. And then at the end of the book, there's like a, a quarter a quarterly review. So that's how I do this. And then what I do on Sunday night, I just take my phone, I take my planner, I take all my appointments from my Google calendar, and I plug them in while everything's still nice and clean. Then I start, you know, flushing out my days and my weeks ahead. Yeah. And I put all my to-dos from Asana in on Monday. That's the one drawback to this planner. I wish there was like a weekly note page, like, you know, just for like clean notes. Yeah. Start the week. He has notes as a note section in the back of the book, Mm -hmm. but there's not many. Um, But I wish like every week had a note page for like, just like this is the week's task list. So what I do is I use a Monday as weekly to do's and I just bookmark it because he's got some nice little you know, bookmarks. And I have yeah. one for this week. And then the blue is for next week. If I have to start adding stuff to next week. Um, and then he doesn't have a monthly. I want a monthly calendar. He doesn't have monthly calendars in there, uh, just the rolling quarters. So I, yeah. yeah. So I was like, I need uh, that, I need that so, long-term view. But here's what I, here's my solution. So you ready for this? Yeah, see, that's what I did. I took those. It was a desk calendar and broke them up and put them on my wall. That's what I did. Beautiful. I love it. So you're much better at the Vanna White than I am. No. <laughs> anyway, so that's it. So it's visual and in my face. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> visual and in your face. <laughs> um, so I did, like you, I don't know if it was one of the times we were talking. I had back here all my calendars taped on the wall. I think I remember that. Yeah, but I took them down and I got this one. <sighs> so it's right here on my desk because I have this cool kind of like corner L-shaped thing that my husband built me. It's quite lovely. But right. I think we did it. I think I did. So Dropbox and Google also for, you know, sharing. I use Slack also yeah. for my freelancing work. So I have teams that I, we work on Slack and Trello. They like Trello. I'm not a big fan of Trello. I prefer Evernote. Although I will say Trello for, cause Asana, you can do boards in Asana, but Trello is much, they have more bells and whistles in Trello for, for lists, for boards, for the mm-hmm. boards. So Asana just sort of answered the, the call of people that wanted to have boards like yeah. Trello, but see Asana has both boards and list making. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. Like you get both. And I prefer some projects are better for boards and some are better for lists. Um, It's because, you know, sometimes the boards, they get so unwieldy and and big and gigantic and long. Whereas with, um, with a list making mentality, it's linear. Right. Or, you know, you know, it's stacked. So for me, like it helps my sanity a little bit more. I don't know. Yeah. I'd rather go down than over. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. So, but I think I that's it. I don't know. We covered it. We, we really, we covered it. And so you guys, you can get Tabitha's ideal day. Don't forget to go get it at powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash ideal day. And we'll share that, um, that uh, ideal day and you can start creating your own. That's right. And that's it. That's it. So I think we, we covered it. Um, we had an awesome time batching these episodes and now it's lunchtime. I'm hungry. I'm losing, I'm losing steam. And I could tell you are too. I know I am. I have to so, get my kids soon too. All right. So Tabitha, <laughs> this was awesome. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you in the next episode. So Sounds good. Enjoy. Love y'all. Alrighty. Okay. Bye. Bye.